Hello everybody, my name is Joan Turner and I am the treasurer at the much acclaimed GHAA, which is the Greater Haverhill Arts Association. And I have with me here today, Susan Nealon, one of our resident artists, members, long time members actually, and she has agreed to do some demos for us. So without further ado, I am gonna take the camera and we're gonna whip it around and Look at Susan, who's fixing so, her hair. Hello. There she is. And thank you very much for coming to my studio today, Joan, and um, working on behalf of the GHAA to bring some of these um, videos of an artist creating. Um, this video will be about an hour long, and they are in lieu of us attending the Saturday portrait workshops that are normally held on the second and fourth Saturday every month. The president, Ann Jones, of the Greater Haverhill Art Association really wanted to keep the association connected during this COVID period. And as a result, she thought that it would be a great idea to do some of these recordings. Um, she asked me about a week ago, and Joni is helping me out here because we were having <laughs> some trouble with Zoom, but we're hey, all set. We're all good now. Oh, we got yeah, it. we're good. And so today, for something different, um, I paint... A lot in acrylics and I really enjoy them and I know that they're not the medium of choice for most people. Um, for most people they're going with oils when they start painting. I enjoy the acrylics because they dry fast and I work fast and I'm able to move things around. So I thought okay acrylic will be good because it's different. The other thing that I really enjoy and I enjoy I teach private art classes I've been doing so for 30 years and um, and they're private only. And um, the reason I sorry. That's okay. I was showing them what your <laughs> awesome art room looks like. I'm like, wow, this is fantastic. And not only did I decide to do acrylic, I also decided to work in red, yellow, and blue, the three primary colors. Oh, cool. And I'm gonna and I have an addition of white to tone things down. If you look over here, this painting was done many moons ago on location in East Kingston and Kingston, um, New, New Hampshire. Hampshire. And um, it's dated. Um, I kept on to it. I held on to it because um, it was probably in the first couple of years I went back into doing art. So I'm going to use that as my reference, but I'll be creating in red, blue, and yellow. And uh, without further ado, I'm cool. just going to get started. Okay, I'm going to show them your palette. So for my palette, I've got a paper palette. I do not want a wooden palette with acrylic because the paint will dry and destroy the wooden palette. So I prefer a paper palette. Some art instructors will say, you know, use a toned palette, and they do mm -hmm. have gray paper palettes. I just like what I'm used to. I'm a creature of habit. And I got used to the white, and I work on the white and teach on the white. Awesome. So the three colors that I've used today, I'm using today are cadmium red light, cadmium yellow light, ultramarine blue and titanium white. So really when you teach or learn to do three values or work in three values, uh, three colors, I'm concentrating on the values, light, medium, and dark. So I'm going to go in and the first, obviously yellow appears to me to be light. So I'm going to go yellow for my sky because when you look at the information, um, the sky is light in the original painting. Um, I've halved and quartered my canvas, and also on here I've made small marks. That will help me place the subject matters where I need them with okay. ease. I have a question. I know sure. I'm supposed to be quiet. Nope, but... that's good. Ask away. <laughs> I love the question. Um, so is this an underpainting, this yellow? Nope. This is going to be, the sky will be yellow. Oh, okay, If cool. you look, do I have anything up that's really tricolor? Um, this is tricolor. This is a real uh, oh, physics wow. tricolor, but that's, that's just red, yellow, blue. So no, you awesome. don't get any realistic colors at all. Cool. That's my father cool. in the eighth grade and his two grandsons. I love it. So, I'm looking over at um, what I'm working from, and I squint a lot so I can get the values right. I'm going to come down and I'm going to place... Um, everything where I feel like it belongs. The rule in art is general to specific. So I'm going to get a general idea 
of where the spine fits. See that New England accent, Joan? Bang. You gotta get the bang on. Get the bang. What I'm doing now, this technique is called scumbling. You can hear the brush. Moving around. And it's just basically, when I'm teaching scumbling, it's just a way to get the paint up there so you can move it around. Gets the paint. I tell my students, just pretend you're trying to get the paint out of the brush. And that allows you to spread things and um, just get the paint spread the way you'd like to. I keep going lighter because when I'm looking at my original painting, the sky is pretty light in some places. So you're adding white to your yellow. I'm adding the white, yep, to get it light where I need it. If you look at this, this area behind here is uh -huh. white, so it will showcase the uh, barn a little bit better. So I'm going cool. a little, um, a little lighter there. Just coming over here. I can see my original blue marks. I'm not worried about them because this will end up in a frame. That's a disadvantage to acrylics is it takes a couple coats to get rid of anything you have underneath. You want to hear a secret? Yeah. Put those put those guidelines on with watercolor pencils. They totally oh, yeah. disappear. You're right. Totally oh, disappear yeah. when you put Perfect. the paint on. Perfect. So I've got an idea, generally speaking, of where the uh, barn's going to be and where the sky is probably going to be. I'm going to bring this earth down a little bit more. And I want to put a suggestion of maybe some clouds. So I'll just go a little light and uh, just a little bit lighter there. Maybe I'll put a little more yellow in up here so it gets a little bit darker. And, Joan, you asked a good question, like, is the sky going to stay this color? Yeah. I may really change it as I go along. <laughs> but I start with the yellow simply because it's light, for no other reason than that. I'm going to put the ground on. The ground is not quite as light as the sky. I'm going to grab a little red and a little yellow. And, again, this is just a great way to do um, studies of light, medium, and dark, which are very important in art. Um, without light, medium, and dark, you don't get three-dimensional work. So uh, one of the very important things is to learn to um, get those values on there, the light, medium, and dark. And for those of you who don't paint, that's okay. You don't have to understand the terminology. I hope you just enjoy watching a painting appear. I hope. For sure. <laughs> doesn't like art. I feel like Art's like chocolate, you know? Mm. <laughs> ah, mm, see? Chocolate. A kindred soul, a kindred yeah. soul. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and the earth, I'm going to, I'm, unfortunately, I'm going to make it green for now. <laughs> I don't really like it to be true, but I'm going to kind of start this way. I've got a little lump where the tree is, a little lump where the barn began. I'm just swashing across this thing as fast as I can. Um, I do paint quickly. Why? Why paint quickly? I do everything quick. <laughs> as I think you saw yesterday when I kept grabbing the zoom and interrupting you. And <laughs> I, um, it's just my nature. I can't slow down. Cool. You want to come and clean my house for me? You get it done in two seconds. Takes me ten years. Tomorrow. <laughs> Okay, everyone, this is on film. You heard it. I have witnesses. I'm not going to be sick tomorrow. Oh, here we go. <laughs> and the sky, so the good thing to know about when you're painting is decide what the star of your show is. And by star of the show, I mean... What are you talking about the most? I'm talking about the barn the most, so I don't have to spend a lot of time making the grass important or the sky important. What I'm going to need to do is talk about the barn and the shadow of the um, tree on the barn. 
and I will say to my students also, if you are doing a painting and you don't know what you're talking about when you paint it, what you want people to see, they aren't going to know either. Good point. When I first started painting and I went out on location, well, I painted and created all my life. Um, however, I put it down to raise my family and then went back to it. So that's another reason I felt like I had to hurry. <laughs> <laughs> I had some lost time. Hurry up, have these kids. Yeah, that's right. Well, no, not so much that. <laughs> Hurry up and get on the other side she, so I can. She is listening. Back okay. and <laughs> I am listening. Yep. Um, Just a quick little test, just making yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. When I first went back, I I went out on location and I was so excited. I was standing there and I thought, oh, look at the clouds. And I really worked on the clouds and then I. And then I got down and I thought, oh, look at the distant trees. And I spent my time doing that. And, of course, all the time the sun's changing. Uh -huh. And then I thought, look at the field and look at the fence. And so each thing that I painted as I went was very beautiful. And I thought, oh, I've got them all perfect. I came home, let the piece <laughs> be, and went back to look at it. And you couldn't even stare at it because... Everything in the piece was important, so not one thing stood out. I've never told the viewer what to look at. So when you look around at other paintings, I'm directing you. I'm telling you what I yeah, want you to look at. Yeah, good point. Good point. So if you don't know, they don't know. So make sure you, you know, figure out what you're, Focal uh, point. What you're painting. Yeah. yeah. So I'm just going to get some of the darks a little bit darker. and um, To me, getting a painting, like, set up, Mm -hmm. is quick. It all slows down once you get, once I get a little bit on the, on the uh, canvas. Down we go. These bushes here I can't put in. They have to go over the barn. So I'm leading up to, okay, I'm going to have to get that barn on there. I do want to put some more um, yellow. I'm probably yellow and white. So I get a very light green. I've got a very light color back there on the original. And I'm going to push that a little bit. I also have a wavy line I haven't drawn that I probably won't, uh, haven't painted, and I probably won't paint it until I get the barn placed and get the bushes, the little bushes placed as well. So I'm going to draw the barn. It has straight edges, so I want to use a flat paintbrush. And you got plenty of paintbrushes yeah, here, yeah. woman. And look, there's more over there. <laughs> I would say there's a few here and there. I yeah, yeah. Have, it's not, I'm not a gatherer. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I can or tell. Anything. Nothing like that. <laughs> My family teases me. I'm borderline hoarder. Oh. I think they're just trying to be nice. <laughs> <laughs> well, I you can never have too many brushes. Well, that's my thought, too. <laughs> All can right. never have too many art supplies. The roof of the barn is dark so I'm gonna to go to blue because blue appears dark. I do want to get this edge where it is and it's just shy of this quarter. Let me put it here. Go up a little bit and I'm just gonna come over and the peak of it So I kind of go, all right, am I there? And I am. So there's that. There's this side. And I also want to look that this is higher than that. That goes down very, very low mm. to the ground. So I'm going to stretch that down. And I'm going to start the lean of the barn. And then this gets dragged down. Right below the half, right near the edge. And generally speaking, right about there, I'm going to come down like this. And one of the things that I want to do is measure my sizes. So I just want to see. Yeah, good. Good. All right. On the draw. And this nice flat brush really makes beautiful edges. So that's why the brushes are so important. 
Yeah. Different kinds for all different stuff. <laughs> this side of the barn is dark. Whoa. On there. And I'm probably going to make it a little purple. Um, it's going to be kind of a nasty purple because of the red that I have, but I want this to look shadowed. And purple is a great color in shadows. Mm. The, um, what Ann Jones and I came up with is, um, because I'm the first person to be elected to do this, um, I won't finish the piece in an hour, but what I will do is finish it before the end of the month and post the finished piece so you can go back on and find, um, how the work turned out. Nice. I want this to be really dark, so I'm just going to put some red, because when I squint, that red gets nice and dark. If I add some blue to it, and that's a good way to get your darks even darker. I usually use six colors, which is two reds, two blues, and two yellows. So it's still um, primary. It's still ah. primary, but it gives you a lot more. It, they become very real. You can make the right colors with them. Yeah. I really didn't want to do that. I wanted this to be... Um, a really exaggerated piece. If you look at that painting of that little boy, the little watercolor on the wall back there, uh, we'll find also, it. That's like oh my gosh, that's, that's like awesome! A red, that's a so, red, blue, yellow, and that looks like a little bambino, little baby. Are these watercolors? Those these are, are watercolors. all watercolors. Uh, the bottom one's colored pencil. Is it really? Yeah. That's amazing. Thank you. Amazing, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful work. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. And sometimes I just grab colors willy-nilly and just put them on and then figure out from there how I want it to look. Yeah, you I'm can always of, modify them. Exactly. Right? Yeah. I'm trying to make it my own. So this, uh, the reason I pulled over to paint this original piece was it was a beautiful sun hitting just this side of this barn and the tree shadow on it was just, it was captivating. So I really want to get this to appear really white. I might even put some yellow from the sky in it. Nice. Warm it up a little bit. And normally you don't work very much with white because white makes colors look flat. But I like it, you know, in cases like this, it helps me. There's a lot of freedom to be able to paint in red, blue, yellow. You don't have to worry about a lot of uh, things you normally would consider, such as correct colors. Mm -hmm. So it gives you a little freedom. Okay, so I have to tell you, I've been painting and doing art a long time. I have never... I mean, a couple of times I've had a limited palette, but I've never just restricted myself to this. Oh, I wonder if you'll. I, give it I a might try. give it a try after seeing this. So I'm putting some red in here because if I say the barn is yellowish red, uh -huh. then the shadow can't be blue. It would have to be a darker yellowish red, which is known as an analogous color. Mm -hmm. I also want to be able to see in the. Uh, into that shadow. So I'm gonna put just a little bit of, a uh, little bit more yellow. Nope. <laughs> and now look, it's getting kind of brown and yucky, so I probably wanna stop playing with it. I like them to be really clean. Um, so 
I'll stop with that and I'm going to work on the tree. Cool. For the tree, I'm going to use a uh, another flat, but it's much smaller. I was doing a demo once and someone said to me, why do you use such small brushes? I never realized I did. <laughs> I, I like to putter at mm -hmm. things and having a small brush lets me scumble and move around and figure out what's going on. So I'm just using the red and the blue and I'm going to start with the trunk. Generally speaking, I've got something like this. Keeping it kind of light till I know that I've got it how I want it to look. You don't want to get it good and dark because, as you saw, it's tough to paint over the acrylic. Uh -huh. So if I just suggest it, I'll be able to move it around if it's not doing what I want it to do. I'm going to move the bond over a little more. I doubted that it was over as far as it was, and it is. <laughs> so I'm going to just make it a little bit wider because it's closer to the tree. And I declare, so there's that. And I'll go back and I'll uh, fix that under painting. I'll go back over here. Do you find when students make a mistake, they immediately panic? Yes. That's the number one thing that I find. I'm like, don't panic. Right. It's, it's, you just let it dry, paint over it. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's tougher with a new student, with yeah. somebody I've had a while. Because the rule is, uh, what I try to tell them is, get a mark on the page, it will be wrong, and spend the rest of your time fixing it. <laughs> and that allows the student to, the freedom of knowing, like, okay, it doesn't have to be right, right now. People think um, it's very different once you take lessons than what you thought mm -hmm. painting was going to be, or drawing for that I matter. agree, I agree. And uh, once people realize, I always um, liken it to making a puzzle. You're going to put the pieces that fit together, the pieces that sit beside each other have to look as though they do. You know, they have to be Good upside, analogy. They have to be where they belong. Yeah, yeah. Yep. yeah. I had a woman once, and I said to her, well, it's kind of like making a puzzle. You can't put this piece on and hope that when you build the border, that's going to be exactly where it belongs. Because yeah, it's yeah. not going to be. Not going to happen. So um, that takes some pressure off. Now, I'm just going to come in. I'm going to suggest, for my own sake, where the window might be, I'm going to suggest the barn door, which is slightly higher. And the other window. And that's a nice general idea. I've got the two sitting up here. There's the door. One, two. You can find this barn if you go where Carmen's Chicken used to be, up at the intersection of 108 and 107. Um, this barn's there. That, that tree has now grown and kind of blocks it from different directions. But Interesting. Yeah, I'm going to kind of bring the land up to it a little more. Move things around. See, I got it on and it was wrong. I'm going to spend all my time fixing it. I feel like I'm a little high here, but I don't think it's a bad thing for the barn, so I'll, I may leave it rather than bring the sky down. Mm -hmm. I'll decide, you know, when I get a little more on here. Uh, I'll grab a little bit more of this. And, and the original was done in oil on location. I like doing a um, acrylic demo because people don't work with me. Now, I can't go over the barn right now because the barn's not done. But I can start to suggest for my own brain, okay, this is where, this is where things are going to go <laughs> as I get there. Yeah, so you'd never think that art is made the way it's made, would you, Joan? Not at all. 
You may find that unless uh, students or other people are actually involved in the art world, they're not even aware of the different mediums. No. You know, people will come into the studio and say, well, you know, I want this and I want that. And I'll say, well, what medium? And I go, I don't know, like that one. And they point <laughs> to something on the wall, you know. Yep, yep. And one time it might be a watercolor, next time it might be an oil or an acrylic. Do you teach all media? I do indeed. Same. Us young folk who have been around a while are into all these different things. Yep. Now, if I get the window and the door on, I need the door very dark. I'll probably use just the Salsa Marine. Maybe. We'll see. I want to bring it a little closer to that window. Now it feels like you could actually get an animal in there. Mm -hmm. I'm feeling kind of good about my basic general idea of what's going on. I'm going to get off the barn and work on the sky a little bit and bring the sky to the barn. 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 So I need clean yellow, so I'm going to put some more out because I polluted it. So Very familiar with that. I'm familiar, <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. So someone go by in a big black truck. Oh, that's standing home from work. I'm not worried that they hit that because... I was just going to say, <laughs> I noticed that you left some white. You know, you didn't let your roof meet the sky. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, all right. We're wait, waiting to see what you did with that. I'm liking yep. it. i got to let the um, barn dry a little bit yeah. more because it's going up into my sky. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to come down here. I'll work on the foreground a little. I want some um, the uh, motion of the land to show up a little bit. I'm going to kind of come here. Okay, so explain what you mean by motion of the land. Uh, so the land has undulations of it and, okay. and movement to it. It's not just a nice flat prairie ground. It has a lot of... Um, hills and lumps and so that's what I mean by that. Cool. Just kind of get it all lumpy and try to get it to look more and more like um, what I'm striving for. You know the bottom of the barn needs a little something here so we'll go in. It has a little foundation. I don't want to announce it too too much. I don't want you taken away by it. So that feels kind of good. All right. I'm going to come in and, uh, let me see, where can we go for a minute? Uh, it's almost dry. I'll work on the, uh, I'll work on the ground a little bit more. As a matter of fact, I'm going to put that hay bale in. So I want to fix the grass mm -hmm. a little bit. Um, I'm just going to kind of come in, put a little more yellow on. So how intuitive is painting for you? I find a great deal of intuition when I'm working. Mm, describe that to me. Say what? Like intuition like... Like yeah. is, you know, the feel right? Is the ground moving the right way? Or is it just straight copy like you're, you're making things where they're supposed to be? I really try to work verbatim. Nature okay. is a really good um, teacher. Yeah. Um, I will move objects. Mm -hmm. I might change them a little bit if I think they need a little help. But for the most part, I'm trying to, if I'm attracted enough to a piece to stop my car, pull over, and get out and paint, I want to paint what, what, what you I see. saw that made me gasp and pull over. It made you feel a certain way. Yep, exactly. Yep, yep. Cool. And usually I'm, I'm getting that feeling because it's so perfectly set up. Yeah, nature is perfect in its imperfections, isn't it? It sure is. You know, I can bring this up a little more. I'm going to put a little bit of light in here. Take some of the sting off of that. Uh -huh. And then we can 
shadow there that I'll leave. So when you say it's take the sting off, you're softening the sharpness yeah, of it? Yeah, it's just too dark and okay. it doesn't really translate well. What kind of paints do you use? Did I see all Galleria? I am not a product snob, so that's a good question. I have Galleria out today. Mm -hmm. um, Galleria is a student grade. Mm -hmm. I've never had trouble with it. It's archival. Um, it's less expensive. And since I support myself on my art, I try to keep my cost to an amount that will reflect my income. In other words, um, <laughs> if I'm not, you know, you never know what you're going to make on your piece or if it's going to sell. Mm -hmm. So if I can get a good quality paint that does what I want, I don't worry. I have had... Um, People who only want the best, they only want um, Hornbacher or Holbein or mm -hmm. other important name brands. That doesn't affect my painting, so mm -hmm. I'm not that concerned about. I'm about with you. It. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Definitely. I even have some really junky paint, and you know where I teach different levels. Mm -hmm. I like to have the different, um, different quality. Types. Yeah. yeah different totally. Quality. Although I include, um, other than painting, I include materials in mm -hmm. my students' fee because a lot of times people will think, well, I don't know what I'm doing, so I'll just get a cheap product. But what happens is not only do you not know what you're doing, the product does not work the way a yeah. more expensive or better quality product would work. So the person who's trying to learn thinks there's something wrong with them, mm -hmm. when all along, it was their product. Yeah. Get the best paint you can afford. That's always my answer. That was? The the, get the best quality you can afford. Yes. That's always yep. my answer. Yep. Because, I mean, I would rather see someone draw with Crayola pencils than not draw at all. Exactly. But, you know, they're not like a Prismacolor pencil, so... I just tell them, get the best quality you can afford, exactly. and that'll make me happy. To bring out the windows? Yeah, to bring them out, sharpen them up, maybe make them straighter. And it also has it in the original. Okay. So I imagine there was some type of um, light, light hitting there. Yeah. Yep. Chopped them up a little too much. I don't know what I wanted to. Some of that is due to the fact that I didn't get a smaller brush out. <laughs> That's okay. It's good. When I, whenever I make a mistake, I always think that's a good thing because it lets everyone know that even teachers can make errors. Oh, And absolutely. this is how you fix it. Yep. Absolutely. absolutely. Yep, yep. Yep. Totally. Yeah, I'm not afraid to um, show the students that... Um, yeah, we all make errors. Yeah, that you make a mistake or that you picked a piece you wanted to do and then you had to walk away from it. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes it's just over a student's head. You know, mm -hmm. they, they start on it and it's not exciting and... Art shouldn't feel like a chore. It's totally so, agree. You know? Totally so, agree. Yeah. I have an elderly gentleman who who takes drawing lessons, mm -hmm. and he agonizes over every stroke. I say, "Are you sure oh, we're enjoying this?" Yep, yeah. yep. I want to do it. Yeah, you know, I but I yeah. Art. I sometimes you get a wonder. Yeah, the ones that need the perfection right away. Yeah. It takes them, actually takes them longer. Longer. You know, children don't have that. I teach children, too. Oh, yeah. And children don't have that. They do hesitation. not. They, if anything, I've got to slow them down. They're like reckless. <laughs> they can be. What's your youngest student? What do you teach? I start at age eight. Oh, okay. So second graders. Second graders. And uh, eight to adult. Mm -hmm. Um. Like I said, it's private. It's private. I have, my youngest student is six. My oh. oldest one is 88. And when I tell you, the kids, I, 
I'm making purple sunshine. And they look at you defiantly, and I say, I just think that's a great idea. Let's make purple sunshine, you know? They are totally uh, uninhibited. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I want to get a little light on this. And, uh, yeah, I'm looking at the original, and you can really uh, see the lights and docks on there. Yes. And I left a lot of strokes on it because I was doing it on location, so uh -huh. I was flying, you know. It looks great, the though. Light. Thank you. You're welcome. This my medium value coming in here. Something like that. So you're assuming a, a light source uh, upper left? Mid left? Uh, yeah, the light source was way back here. Way back. Casting oh, okay. Everything. Nice. Actually, yeah, right here. So Behind this tree it. Yes. Is casting its yeah, yeah, yeah. There. Cool. Uh, yeah, I can see it. That's awesome. I'm going to put this in, even though I'll probably <laughs> yeah, think about it again, but I just want to get some more in just for myself. Uh, I just like placing the subject so I can yeah. see a little bit better what's going on. I'm not thrilled with my barn size. It's not as, um, not the same as that, but okay. It looks good. And you since know, it's a demo. I'm yeah, not... well, not only that, they, each painting has a life of its own. They come out a little different. Oh, yeah. You can never do the same thing no. twice. Nope, nope. Which is why it's good to invest in art. <laughs> because That's right. you aren't going to get, you aren't going to get an original piece anywhere. From yeah, and real uh, real collectors know that. Yes, I do two big shows a year in Boston, and um, they do not want the prints there unless they absolutely exactly. have to. They yeah. want the original art. Oh yeah. Yep. Where you where are the um, they're part of sci-fi conferences. I'm a Star Trek freak. And oh, so oh, 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 oh. <laughs> she's like, oh, I kind of oh, thought so, oh, Joan. One of those. One of those. <laughs> and so a sci-fi uh, conference and part of the uh, weekend festivity is a weekend-long art show. And I mean, at any given time, there are over 5,000 people roaming around. So wow. your work gets lots of exposure. It's nice. You know, you put your cards out. People yeah. take the cards. Every now and then, you sell a piece. I have yet to uh, actually make it. Uh, I might have made a profit once. <laughs> really? You have to buy your space, certainly. Okay, yeah. Plus, I always buy other people's works. I'm like, oh, my oh. God, that's fantastic. So, you know, yeah. I buy other people's work. So even when I sell my own work, I always come out of deficit. I stay the weekend, which means I have to pay for the hotel. Because yeah, yeah. I'm like, God forbid I should miss anything. So someone said to me, do you actually make money though over there? Do you put out? I said, no. I said, but I have a blast. Yeah. And you get to meet the best artists. You Absolutely. Know, you might not make it that day, but mm -hmm. your name's out there. And eventually yes. it comes. Yep, yep. You know, the more we put yeah. ourselves out there. I, you know what? You get a lot of, um, you can get a lot of business from the exposure. So, yes. I mean, my art is not my only income, but it's an important part of it. Um, so absolutely. Uh, so I did sell a big, huge piece this past year, which was nice. So like I said, once in a while I actually make a profit, but mostly I make other pe profits for other people. Yeah, I want that. Yep, yeah, let me have that. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> I'm like, oh my God. But you know, they always have a very formal, you know, art reception. So you really get... Oh. You, know, you walk around with your glass of wine, and you get to talk to all the artists, and they do demos there as well. We'll have to hook you up. You'd you be perfect there. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. You're welcome. I send you some links. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, art and computers. Now you know oh, and it's mother of invention. It really, really <laughs> is. Even as an artist, now you have to be. Oh, I, you've got to you, stay up. You gotta stay up yeah, with it. And I mean, I'm like, I can get out of a computer just what I need to get out of it, Same. you know? Yeah. So, and other people are like, well, don't you know this? And I'm like, mm -hmm. no. <laughs> yeah, the same, but COVID certainly has made me work more intensely yeah. to learn. Yeah. 
Absolutely. And I think, you know, we were talking a little bit earlier that every situation has some kind of potential for growth or positive positivity. And I think in this case, you know, when I ask myself, where are the opportunities here? Definitely in the technical department. Because, yes. uh, you know, there's no doubt that you can reach more people this way yes. than just, you know. So there is. Every, everything matters. Everything counts. And this is amazing. Very nice. Really? Yes. Thank you. You're welcome. I love working with the yellow. And I like having my students do it. Yeah, I'm a, impressed. It's a challenge. Yeah. But, again, it makes people memorize the values. And mm -hmm. it takes the pressure off of having the color right. Mm -hmm. So they can focus um, on what they, they can focus on what they're creating rather than um, struggling with correct colors. Mm -hmm. You're a true teacher. You're teaching them the basics and just kind of... Yeah, I try just, to build that foundation. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I've had a lot of students um, go into art professionally. And you've had a lot of students eat just within the GHAA that are award-winning students. I think, I don't know, I'd have to check the stats, but I think your students probably win the most awards and whatnot. I'm going to be humble. You are? Okay, well, you may not say it yourself. I will say it. You must be an awesome teacher because your <laughs> students win lots of awards and uh, and accolades in general. All right, Very... I concede. Okay, okay, I'm good. I love it. Okay, but while you're doing that, I have to show people your ceiling because I keep looking oh. at the at the ceiling. Oh, there's a story. With there's a ceiling. story with the ceiling. Oh, yeah. The ceiling. When I, when I first got this um, studio, um, well, when I built it, you know, when I was married. Amazing. It was a glass and garage door shop. Mm -hmm. And wow. um, when I got divorced, I uh, bought the house off of my ex-husband, and um, this, I had to convert this over to all um, art space. Sure. And so, um, when I met Dan, he said to me, that's dangerous to have the fiberglass showing. Who's it's Dan? Do I know good. Dan? Dan is my partner. Oh, oh okay. And so, um, and so he said, um, let's take, or actually we both, I said, how about if we put, so I frame my own work and people give me frames. So I thought, well, what if I put, um, punch all the work out of the frames and, and anything I've created that I don't like, and put it up and it'll block it. So I got and started it. I had it all done. And then as I made money, I was able to start sheetrocking back there. And when I did, the students were so upset. Yeah, this is and much I better over here. That. That's right. So um, it sits in limbo. <laughs> <laughs> also, I gotta show people your, uh, there is a swing in the middle of our <laughs> studio, which the first day I got here, I'm like, can I sit on this, or is it going to break? And she's like, no, it's bolted into the ceiling. So, yeah, yeah I, I sat on here for a good 10 minutes and swing myself. Swing. Is that a real word? Did you swing? I swang. <laughs> swang when I sort of swung. Nice and nicer. And since um, this is a distant edge, I want to keep everything nice and soft so it appears as though it's further back. Because when things are far away, you can't see clear edges. So we soften the distant edges. Lose the detail. 
Yeah, for sure. Great. And for then sure. this just keeps you from going right off the um, painting. Okay, I don't know how strict your timeline is, but we're at the 45 minute mark. Okay. Um, Up to you. Look at our hour, and then I'll finish this um, and put it back. Bring it back to you or Ian. Yeah, we can post it right on the website. Shadow also needs to have the color of the um, earth in it. So I'm going to take and use some orange and yellow because that's the color that's here and go over this a little bit and put some of that um, land color into the shadow so it appears more real. I'll go over that too and after and calm that down a little bit and make it less um, distinct and then get it on and kind of take it back. And when you do see this when it's finished, it'll look quite different. Um, this painting to complete will probably take another two hours. That's great. You can do it in three. Total of three hours. Yes, total of three. Nice. It's tougher when you're in location. Yeah. Yeah, because the sun keeps changing. The lighting changes. Yeah. I just did a beautiful class on location um, at a house on Plum Island looking back towards the report. Nice. Oh, it's just beautiful. But man, did that sun change fast. It was a real challenge for the yeah. students. You don't even realize it until you need to account for the changes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's see, now I get this a little lighter. And as I do this, what happens is I'm able to straighten my windows out mm -hmm. by painting what's outside of them. see it a little bit better myself so I can figure out what's going on. I think it's going to be it for today, Joni. Okay. I do want to put a little bit of that shadow of the tree on there though before we go. Even if I do change it, what it's going to be is um, a different value of the barn itself. And that is the one flaw with that piece. I didn't know at the time how to make analogous colors for the shadows. So this shadow is going to look much more real, whereas that one almost looks like an extension of the tree. So even the teacher grows and learns. Oh. You never stop, do you? No, never you stop don't. learning. We keep going. Keep going. don't want it to look like a sunburst <laughs> so I'll be changing it up a little there's also another tree here that yes. I'll be putting in oh cool so um, that will look nice it's got a cup yeah and that'll help this too yep and those are showing up okay when I squint through my eyelashes I can see the values and that's a good way to teach them and see them and I can see you know whether I need to go a little deeper and I feel like I do um, 
I've got branches that go different ways, so I want to make sure I put these different ways. But it will be something like that. This is going to come right up to that window. So it's got, like I say, there's going to be a lot of changes. And I think that's it's going to keep developing and developing itself. All right, so this is it for today. And when we get the finished piece, we'll put it up on the website, which is www.haverhillartassociation.org. Uh, okay, so you can see all the information about uh, GHAA and all of the events that are coming up and so on and so forth. This is the work that we were working from. And this is what we did today, which we'll go through a number of changes. We'll put the finished piece up on the website. Oh, and we want to say minutes. thank you, thank you. I know, oh, amazing. You're welcome, you're so, welcome. Thank you, thank you. And I am sure everyone is going to want to get a hold of you after seeing this. So how can we get a hold of you if we want to? So my website is www.susannealand.com, my name. And uh, my email is Neeland fine arts at no, aol.com no spaces no spaces, spaces no underscores okay but you're better off going to the website it'll mm. give you a nice view of um the breadth of my work and also i have a contact page so you can nice. use the contact page to reach out to me nice and um and my phone number uh is 603-382-5332 okay so are you Taking new students now? I am not. I have You're a not. waiting list of okay. 25. All right. So can people, like, get on the waiting list? They can list get on the waiting list, Okay. Yes. And sometimes, even if you're coming late on the waiting list, uh -huh. there's openings that happen that other people can't do. True. So, you know, you might have a day that mm -hmm. um, you can take, and you can okay. get in there a little sooner. Perfect, perfect. Thank you, thank you so, so very much. Thank you this very was much. awesome. I appreciate it. And we we'll look forward to your next one. Okay, thank All you right. very much. All right, thank you, darling. Okay, bye bye.